Hello everyone, this is Steven again, and in this video I wanted to go through settings for play blasting that will give you the most optimal look of the preview for your animation. So I've got this that I did a bouncing ball, and I could just go ahead and play blast, but uh, I want to set some settings first. So I'm going to go up here to where we have the render settings. You can also get to it from the Windows menu. So you can go Windows, Rendering, Editors, Render Settings. So either way you go there, you can get to the same render settings window. It doesn't matter what render I'm using at this point in time, but I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to make sure my preset is the size of the final render. So generally when I'm doing this, when I'm play blasting, it's either just to show a quick preview of what I'm looking at in my animation, or I'm actually dropping that into a timeline where I've edited my shots together. So if I'm building up a lot of shots that are going to go together. I'm going to play blast to put that in there temporarily before I render. So I usually want to set this at my final render. So I could just go down here and set it to HD 1080 if that's my final render and then click close. Again, I can open this from this icon up here and again, go down to the bottom. Doesn't matter what uh, render you're using, but I'm actually going to set this to HD 720 and I'm going to close. The next thing I want to do, generally I make a shot camera for my animation. Generally in most animations, you don't want to use the perspective camera for your final shot view. So I've created this shot camera right here that has a gate mask on it. And this gate mask, you can turn on and off the resolution gate, right? Not the film gate, because the film gate is actually the camera back. You're going to turn on the resolution gate and you know when it's on because it shows you what the render settings would be at the top. So what's here inside this gate is what would eventually render. It shows me what camera I'm on here if you have that display turned on. I've been asked before, how do I get rid of, you know, the controls, you know, anything else that's in my view. Some people go ahead and turn them off, like turn off the visibility or hide these controls. And I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to make sure that these controls don't show up in your Play Blast. I'm going to right click, go to Play Blast, Play Blast Options. And in the Play Blast Options window, I'm just going to go through this really quick and I'll show you what this looks like when I Play Blast it. But I'm going to make sure it says View, right? I want to make sure that's on. Show Ornaments, I'm going to make sure that that's on. Uh, I can actually turn it off if I want to hide things like the grid. So, uh, but I'm going to leave that on for now just to show this. I need to make sure render off screen is on. I'm on a Mac, so it's going to show AV foundation if I want to make a play blast that is used for QuickTime. So uh, to create an H.264 or MP4 file, I'm going to choose that. If you're on a PC, if you see AVI, then that's the movie file for the PC, but it makes really large files. So you can actually download the QuickTime installer and just install the codecs from that. And then you're going to have uh, an option that says QT and you can choose the uh, MP4 for encoder. In this case, it's AV Foundation and the H.264 encoder. When I get down here to display size, I don't want to just choose from window. So what that's doing is however big my window is, it's going to play a blast from that size. So one of the reasons I chose the render settings first is I can go here and say from render settings and it's going to create a play blast that's that size. I can choose custom and set the size, but this coordinates the two. It makes sure that my play blast is the same size as my eventual render. The next one's actually really crucial. It's a scale 0.5. It's 50% of the render settings right now. So I just set that to one. Frame padding doesn't matter because it's only if you're play blasting to individual image files and then stitching them together, which I don't generally do. You can choose remove temporary files. And what that's going to do is if I just play blast without any other settings, it's going to show me the play blast as soon as it closes it will remove, that's just a temporary file. As soon as it closes, it will delete it, right? So if I say remove temporary files, it'll get rid of it and you will never find it again, right? It just deletes it. If I click save to file, if I choose this option, then I can type in my movie file name. And if I don't click browse, it's just gonna save it to the movies directory of my project folder, as long as I've had that set, right? So that would do that. Or I could click browse and stick it wherever I would want to. Right. So there's a couple other options depending on where you pull up the Play Blast options from. 
but I'm just going to go ahead and click Play Blast. If you click Apply, it'll leave this window open and then Play Blast. If you click Play Blast, it'll Play Blast it and close this window. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to Play Blast and it goes through and does its thing. And now here's my Play Blast and I can play it through and it shows my bouncing ball. And if I close that, I'm going to go back to Maya. Right now I've saved that Play Blast. The only thing you'll notice from that is it showed up these lines, right? Now, what I could do is I could go to Play Blast Options. I can turn off Show Ornaments and then Play Blast again. You'll notice when I'm Play Blasted it, uh, these still show up, the curves still show up, this editable motion trail does, but it hid the grid and it hid all other things within that window. So that's what that Show Ornaments does. So I'm going to go back to Maya and back here. How I get rid of these, I don't want to just hide them because I don't want to have to turn them on and off all the time. So I'm going to go to this show menu. So I'm going to go to show that little bar at the top. If I just click that, it's going to pull that menu off and it's going to float it around like I can move it around and, and use that to make some options. So this menu shows different elements in the main viewport. So I could start turning those off. So the curves around this, the control curves are actually NURBS curves. So if I turn that off, you'll see them go away. I'm going to turn that back on. Polygons is actual mesh, right? So I can turn that off. And there's a whole bunch of different things that I can turn on and off. Now, the bad thing is if you turn these off, then you don't see them in your viewport. You play last, you have to come back and turn them back on. You could just go show all. But there's this great menu down here at the bottom that says Play Blast Display. And I'm going to click that header at the top of that menu. And I am going to click Override Viewport. I'm going to say None, but I'm going to turn on just Polygons. Right, so it's just going to show me Polygons in the Play Blast. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to close that. I'm going to right click go to Play Blast Options. I don't need to go to Play Blast Options every time if I already have the settings set and I don't need to make any changes to the settings, but I'm going to go back and make sure. I'm just going to confirm it. So everything should be set. Show Ornaments is off. Render Off Screen. View is on from Render Settings. It's set to 1. And then I'm going to save my file. So I'm going to go ahead and click Play Blast. It's going to Play Blast that file. Now when I look at my Play Blast, it's nice and clean and it's the same size as my eventual render. So this has all the little widgets turned off. It will turn off all the little gizmos, the control curves, the editable motion trail. It turns off the grid. It even hides the mask, right? Which I don't necessarily need in the Play Blast. Just generally when I'm Play Blasting, I don't mind seeing the mask. But if I'm going to drop this into a timeline and show that, then I probably don't want that on, right? So I'm going to go back to Maya. And again, that's under the Show menu. I don't need to pull it off to show it, but I'm going to go all the way down to Play Blast Display, and I can make sure I override Viewport and just turn on Polygons. Now, if I want to show the grid or I want to show other things, there's a lot of other options that I can turn on and show, like lights or planes or you know any of these other things. I can go ahead and turn those on. So if I'm like animating with hair or follicles or end cloth, I can turn those on and I can see them in the Play Blast, right? But this is a way that I can just show the polygons in that Play Blast, right? So if I turn on Grid, it would show the grid in the Play Blast. So I'm going to turn that off. The other way to show the Play Blast options is go to Windows, go to Play Blast Options, and what this is going to show is a couple other options for the time slider. Like right now, when you right click here, it's not going to show those options in the Play Blast options. So it currently is set to time slider. So whatever is in the time slider, it ends at 120, starts at 1, right? Whatever is there is going to Play Blast. I can actually turn on the start and end and set it to a different frame that is different in this timeline or in the time slider, right? In that range. So whatever I have this range set to, it's going to play blast if I have it set to time slider. That is the default when you right click down here and go to play blast options, right? It's not giving you the option to get set a start and end. It's assuming that you want this entire thing play blasted, right? And again, it kept the same settings and I can play blast again if I want. But that gives you the basics of play blasting and how to kind of change certain settings to get your play blast to be the same size as your render. So if you're going to use it, 
in say, you know, you're creating a whole project where you have multiple shots and multiple scenes, you can drop that into a timeline. And usually the, the workflow is you're creating an animatic and you're replacing the animatic with these play blasts and then you're rendering and replacing that. So it's a good workflow and uh, I hope you've learned kind of the ins and outs of play blasting and that helps you when you're doing your animation.